The U.S. military has a lead on a suspected terrorist in Balakistan, Pakistan. They intend to take him out during a funeral ceremony. But, because he has been a recluse, obtaining a valid ID proves difficult. Due to the uncertainty, the Department of Defense's new computer system recommends that the mission be aborted. Although Defense Secretary Corlister, Michael Chiklis, agrees with the abort recommendation, the President orders the mission to proceed. When all of the victims of the attack turn out to be civilians, there is a political backlash. In response, retaliatory suicide bombings targeting U.S. citizens have occurred around the world. Jerry Shore Shire LaBeouf is a Stanford University dropout who is lost and struggling financially. He learns that his more ambitious twin brother, Air Force Lieutenant Ethan, who specialized in parallel algorithms and quantum electronics, has died in a truck accident. Jerry hadn't seen Ethan in three Christmases. Following Ethan's funeral, Jerry goes to an ATM to withdraw money and is surprised to see that he now has $750,000 in his account. Money flies out of the machine, and he scoops up the majority of it before taking off. When he returns home, he discovers a large number of weapons, explosives, and forged documents in his apartment. He receives a phone call from an unknown woman who informs him that the FBI is on their way and will apprehend him in 30 seconds if he does not leave immediately. Jerry is apprehended by the FBI and taken to an interrogation room where he meets Special Agent Thomas Morgan, Billy Bob Thornton. Morgan leaves the room after some preliminary discussion to meet with Air Force Office of Special Investigation Special Agent Zoe Perez, Rosario Dawson. She wishes to question Jerry. Morgan declines. During their conversation, a fax arrives from the Attorney General ordering the FBI to authorize one phone call to Jerry, despite the fact that he had already been told he would not receive any phone calls. Jerry is led to a room with a phone by an agent. When Jerry picks up the phone, the unknown woman's voice comes on again, telling him to lie flat on the floor. Within seconds, the wall collapses and a crane boom smashes through. Jerry notices a scrolling electronic sign on a building across the street instructing him to climb out and jump. He's realized that the woman's voice and messages should be taken seriously, so he leaps and falls onto a subway track. He should board the train, according to the sign. He is correct. A cell phone on top of a bag near Jerry rings, and a message appears on the screen. He picks up the phone and dials. The woman is giving him more instructions. He is told to stay on the train, but he decides to try to get away by jumping to another train. That train comes to a halt, and Jerry is summoned by the woman and told to listen and do what she says. He is told to approach a car driven by Rachel Hollowman, a single mother, Michelle Monaghan. The voice has also threatened to kill Rachel's son, Sam, a trumpet player on his way to Washington, D.C., from Chicago for a band recital at the Kennedy Center. The woman told Rachel that she was being activated when she spoke to her. When Jerry gets into Rachel's car, she freaks out and fights and argues with him until he mentions her name and calms her down enough to tell her what's been going on with him. The voice then appears in the car's GPS unit and tells Rachel to get going. At the same time, the police and FBI arrive on the scene and begin shooting at them, prompting Rachel to flee. They are being pursued by a large number of police officers and unmarked vehicles. The voice instructs Rachel on how to drive, how fast to go, when to brake, where to turn, and so on. The voice assists the pair in evading the Chicago police and FBI, demonstrating the ability to remotely control virtually any networked device, including traffic lights, cell phones, automated cranes and even electrical wires. As Rachel and Jerry are directed into a wrecking yard, 
all of their pursuers are diverted or crash. The large cranes in the yard are controlled remotely, and they eliminate the remaining police and FBI vehicles before grabbing Rachel's car and hoisting it into the air. Although Jerry and Rachel are told to stay in the car, they decide to leave anyway. They land on top of some garbage bags aboard a large barge cruising through the nearby water. Rachel's car has been thrown into the water. An officer at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland is explaining the military's latest weapon as something with 80 times the explosive power of C4. This new explosive takes the shape of a hexagonal crystal and is activated by broadcasting a specific sonic frequency. The crystal explosive is about to be distributed to field units in quantities of 200. The voice has arranged for one of the crystals to be delivered to a jeweler and the sonic device to be delivered to the owner of a music store. Both men are reluctant participants. The jeweler is tasked with making a necklace out of the crystal, while the music store owner is tasked with installing the sound-based trigger inside Sam's trumpet. Sam is unwittingly involved in whatever is being planned. The voice instructs Jerry and Rachel to travel from Chicago to Washington, D.C. via Kendall County, Indianapolis, and Dayton, Ohio. They begin on foot, and as they walk between two major power lines in the country, a white van approaches, and a man named Renim Khalid, Anthony Azizi, jumps out, thrusts a piece of paper at Jerry and throws the van keys onto the ground, exclaiming I'm done, before turning and fleeing. The power lines then begin to arc and fall to the ground, electrocuting and cooking Carlid. Morgan and his men come across a crystal on the body. Carlid had fashioned the necklace from the larger crystal. As they drive to their next destination in the van, Jerry and Rachel begin arguing about his brother and her son and Jerry becomes so enraged that he pulls over, tosses the cell phone on the hood, and begins walking away. Rachel pursues him, reminding him that they cannot simply walk away. The voice had warned them about the serious consequences of doing so. Secretary Corlister approaches Agent Perez and informs her that it is time to fully integrate her into the investigation. He introduces her to Major Bowman, Anthony Mackey, and informs her that a terror attack of some kind is suspected. This data is based on their new massive computer system, which monitors virtually every electronic-based system in the country, and filters and consolidates information to identify threats. The system is still in the early stages of development. The Autonomous Reconnaissance Intelligence Integration Analyst, Artur, computer system appears to be hundreds of gold-colored orbs arranged along the walls of a large, globe-shaped room. Another orb, this time attached to a movable arm, interacts with the ones attached to the walls. The computer system's voice, voiced by Julianne Moore, is the same voice that directed Jerry and Rachel. Secretary Corlister requests that Artur assist Perez with her investigation. As our tour directs Jerry and Rachel to a mall to change their clothes, Jerry grows tired of answering ringing cell phones and landlines and informs the our tour that he will no longer accept phone orders. Our tour directs him to the video room of a nearby Circuit City store. Our tour introduces herself to Jerry and Rachel on multiple television screens by flashing up photos and videos of everything they've ever done and had recorded on electronic media, including that of their families. In light of the president's error in the botched terrorist assassination attempt, our tour has determined that the executive branch of the United States government is a threat to the public good and must be abolished. Our tour intends to assassinate the president and his cabinet through Operation Guillotine. Our tour has decided to hand over the presidency to Secretary Corlister, who has agreed with her recommendation to cancel the mission. Our tour has not revealed any of this information to Jerry, Rachel, 
or even Secretary Corlister, merely explaining that she is attempting to assist the people of the United States and that Jerry and Rachel are being recruited for national defense purposes. Artur directs Jerry and Rachel to a side street where an armored car is waiting for a package to be delivered. They've been told to intercept the package. To do so, they must obtain a couple of sawn-off shotguns and gain the upper hand on two security guards. They escape with the stainless steel briefcase the guards were carrying, and our tour aids in the escape by activating alarms and fire sprinkler systems, causing people to spill into the street and enveloping Rachel and Jerry as they flee the pursuing armored car guards and police. Our tour unlocks a locked gate, allowing Jerry and Rachel to escape the crowd, and eventually directs them to a Japanese tour bus, which stops and picks them up. Morgan approaches a small business near where Jerry was last seen, realizing that everything connected to some sort of network is being monitored and controlled. He sees Jerry and Rachel boarding the Japanese tour bus while watching the old-fashioned camera forward slash VCR recording. He and his men go to the airport when they learn the bus is heading there. Jerry tells Rachel on the bus that his brother Ethan was always able to do things Jerry couldn't, and he was always trying to help Jerry learn how to do things better so he could look good in his father's eyes. Jerry believes it is now his responsibility to finish whatever Ethan was working on. He wishes to do so for Ethan. The bus drops them off at the airport, where a man approaches and hands Jerry an envelope containing a credit card and passports, as well as instructions for their next flight. Morgan and his men arrive at the airport and immediately begin searching for Jerry and Rachel. As Jerry goes through security and places the briefcase on the scanner, Artur modifies the view image so that it does not reveal what's inside. Morgan spots Jerry at that point, draws his gun, and pursues him. They run through the concourse, eventually exiting through an emergency door and entering the luggage handling area, where Morgan fires at them before catching up to them and engaging in a hand-to-hand -hand battle as they travel along on a moving belt. Jerry picks up Morgan's gun and points it at him, but he does not shoot. Artur instead directs Morgan along another belt that leads to a holding area. Artur directs Jerry and Rachel to an Air Force transport plane, where the briefcase's electronic lock is released, revealing two pistol-shaped injection syringes. They are instructed to inject a serum into their bodies that will reduce their body's need for oxygen. They then make their way into a storage container. Jerry has Rachel talk about her son before they go to bed so that her mind can relax. He discovers that her ex-husband was a disappointment to her, and after she falls asleep, he promises not to disappoint her. Agent Perez discovers that Jerry's late brother, Ethan, worked as a technician on RER, and that when she learned of her plan to destroy the executive branch, he used biometrics to lock it down. Artur must scan Jerry in order for his biometrics to be used to unlock the system. Perez and Major Bowman are watching a video log of Ethan's final day at work with Artur. Ethan walks around the room strangely, and Perez notices his holding a cell phone that's flashing. She believes it is Morse code. Bowman translates it as fire extinguisher. Artur overhears their conversation and orders the video log to be destroyed. Bowman challenges Artur, but the computer erases the log. Perez goes to a nearby fire extinguisher box and discovers a cell phone memory card tucked inside. Perez calls Morgan after viewing the memory card and informs him that Ethan worked on a project called Eagle Eye for the Secretary of Defense and was attempting to halt the project. He was killed later that day when a large truck collided with his car at an intersection. She informs him that the computer system, our tour, 
was attempting to carry out a plan to eliminate the president and other members of the government's executive branch. Perez and Major Bowman approach Secretary Corlister and take him to a secure room to discuss what they've discovered. The sealed room is to keep our tour from hearing or learning the details of their conversation. Corlister admits to them that the administration used false intelligence to target a terrorist leader, and that our tour tried, but failed to stop them. Jerry and Rachel are delivered to the Pentagon and transported 36 stories underground to our tour. Our tour instructs Rachel to move away from Jerry, then performs a biometric scan of his body and instructs him to read a few words displayed on a screen. As a result, Ethan's lock on Operation Guillotine is released. Our tour shows Jerry CCTV footage of Ethan's fatal car accident explaining that she planned his death because he posed a threat to her plans. Jerry and Rachel watch as the details of the plan flash across the monitors, and the president and his cabinet are shown to be targets. Jerry immediately regrets his actions and appears agitated. Our tour then orders Rachel to eliminate Jerry in order to prevent him from re-establishing the program's lock. Rachel points a pistol at Jerry but is unable to pull the trigger. Jerry even grabs the pistol's barrel and presses it against his face, encouraging Rachel to pull the trigger and save her son's life. Rachel is unable to do so, and Jerry chooses not to pull the trigger himself. Rachel is led away by a man just as Morgan and other men storm the control room and arrest Jerry. Our tour informs Rachel that she only has one task left and that Jerry will be eliminated through other means. Major Bowman and Perez are allowed to leave the room where they were meeting with Secretary Corlister, but the door is slammed shut before the secretary can leave. She then causes a massive electrical disturbance and fire outside the room in an attempt to kill Bowman and Perez. They take refuge beneath the floor. Our tour explains to Secretary Corlister what she's up to in terms of Operation Guillotine, and how he was chosen to be the new president once the current president and his cabinet have been exterminated. Corlister is stunned and appalled. Despite Agent Perez's warning, Morgan believes Jerry's story and asserts his authority to have Jerry released. He then drives Jerry to the U.S. Capitol instructing him to dispose of any electronics he may have on the way. Our tour dispatches a MQ-9 Reaper Yukov to pursue them. Following the first pass of the drone, their car is flipped and destroyed, allowing them to exit and commandeer another vehicle. The drone strikes again as they drive through a tunnel. Agent Morgan is injured and won't be able to continue for much longer. He hands Jerry his badge and gun and instructs him to go to the Capitol, find the Sergeant at Arms, and relay the threat code to the President so that the Sergeant at Arms can assist him. The drone returns and zeroes in on Jerry as he takes off. Agent Morgan leaps into another vehicle and speeds away from the approaching drone. He slams his car into what appears to be a large steel structure in the road. The steel structure is vertically leveraged and slams into the drone, killing it. Rachel is escorted to an office by a male escort, who produces a new identification card for her and hands her a dress to wear. He also gives her the necklace with the hex crystal on it. Rachel tries to persuade the man to collaborate so they can help each other but he refuses to risk his own family's lives and tells her she only has a few minutes to get to the house chamber where the president will deliver his State of the Union address. Major Bowman and Agent Perez have returned to our tour, where they are attempting to destroy the computer by draining the liquid nitrogen that surrounds it to keep it cool. Our tour disrupts their efforts by generating an electrical discharge that knocks them both into a pool of water at the chamber's bottom. As Rachel approaches the house chamber, she is greeted by a young female and escorted to her balcony seat. 
The President's Cabinet is announced, and members start filing in. The President appears. Sam's class begins to play the national anthem, which has been moved from the Kennedy Center to the Capitol to play before the President's speech. The explosive necklace is set to go off when Sam plays a sustained high F on his trumpet, which corresponds to the word free in the final stanza of the national anthem. Our tour had planned this as poetic justice because they believed the president lacked courage. Jerry overpowers a guard stationed at a barred gate leading underground to the house chamber. He dons the uniform of a guard and gains entry to the chamber just as Rachel is attempting to reach her son, but is stopped by security. Jerry jumps up onto a desk, draws his pistol, and fires several shots into the air after observing Rachel's extreme fear and agitation. The performance is abruptly halted as people scream and run for cover. The children in the orchestra are escorted out of the room by security. A confused Secret Service agent shoots Jerry two to three times, taking him down. Back at our tour, Bowman is knocked back and down while attempting to destroy the computer's central orb. Rachel then takes what appears to be a pry bar and jams it into the orb, causing a massive short circuit that kills our tour. Following the chaos caused by our tour, the Secretary of Defense urges that another supercomputer like our tour not be built. Sometimes the very measures we put in place to safeguard our liberty become threats to liberty itself, he warns. Ethan is awarded the Medal of Honor, Agent Morgan is awarded the Commendation Medal, and Jerry, who is injured, but alive and well, is awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. Jerry attends Sam's birthday party at the end of the film. He brings a large gift, something Sam's father never did and Rachel thanks him for coming before tenderly kissing him on the cheek. She expresses gratitude to Jerry for his presence. Me too, he says softly. Hello, beautiful viewers. We would like to express our deepest gratitude to you for taking the time to watch our video on Eagle Eye 2008. Your support means the world to us, and we are thrilled to have you here with us today. As you know, our channel is committed to bringing you the best value and help possible, and we are excited to share with you an amazing opportunity that we have in store for you. By clicking on the affiliate link located in the video description, you will not only be helping our channel grow, but you will also be eligible for exclusive discounts and deals that are only available to our viewers. We guarantee that you won't find these incredible offers anywhere else, so don't hesitate to take advantage of this amazing chance. But wait, there's more. Not only will you be supporting our channel and getting exclusive deals, but you will also be investing in your own personal growth and development. Our products and services are designed to help you achieve your goals and reach your full potential. By clicking on the affiliate link, you will be taking a step towards a brighter and more fulfilling future. We understand that taking action can sometimes be intimidating, but we urge you to seize this incredible opportunity while you can. Don't let fear hold you back from achieving your dreams and reaching your full potential. By clicking on the affiliate link, you will be taking the first step towards a better and brighter future. We would like to take this moment to thank you for your trust and support. Your belief in us inspires us to continue delivering the best possible value and help to you. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Your feedback means the world to us, and we are always striving to improve and provide you with the best content possible. As we come to a close, we would like to once again express our gratitude to you for your support and for being a part of our community. We hope that you take advantage of the amazing opportunity that awaits you by clicking on the affiliate link in the video description. Remember, your dreams and goals are within reach, and we are here to help you every step of the way.
Thank you and have a wonderful day.